couple cases just to, uh, to go over. Uh, the lady that does my shirts every Saturday morning uh, stopped me and says, what do you think about this, this spot I have? And I looked at her typical uh, ECM rash. She's not one of my patients. And she wanted me to give her antibiotics then and there. I mean, this is Pokemoke, and, and that was reasonable. And I said, uh-uh, but I will treat you for free. Come to my office, we'll draw your lab database. Well, that was not acceptable. Well, all right. And she shows up, and fortunately, I did have her labs, as this turns out, and she was the worst HLA 0401. TGF beta 1 is nearly 18,000. I mean, this woman is fried. And, you know, C4A is up, and C3A, we've talked about acute Lyme. I'm seeing her within a couple of days of tick bite. No surprise, her C4A is high, and C3A as well. MMP9 is sky high. But this is a small town, and she <laughs> doesn't agree with me because the doctor, who is her confessor as well, um, and I'm not complaining about hairdressers second guessing what I do, the priests also have the same problem. Because, you know, as they told me a long time ago, if you want to get known in this small town, introduce yourself to the barber, introduce yourself to the hairdresser. And, and sure enough, you sit in that chair, and I'm going to tell you, people start talking immediately, right? I mean, you feel safe there. You, they got this knife close to your throat. <laughs> They'll talk to you. She says, no, nah, you don't have Lyme. And she says, I'm not going to take the antibiotics. And I see her the next Saturday and expecting, how are you doing? Well, I'm feeling so much better. Thank you for the free care. And it was, I'm not taking antibiotics. I says, you've got to be kidding me. You know, you're, you're fried. And then when the C4A comes in and TGF-81, I sent her a certified letter. And now when I go and pick up my laundry on Saturday mornings, it's, good morning, here are your shirts, that's $16.40. And I used to bring these, these folks candy for Christmas and all this other stuff. So it's the end of a good friendship. But um, she, I, I, I warned her. And now she's fried. TGF beta 1 knocks out, changes growing hair follicles. Remember, growing hair follicles are antigen hairs. When you have uh, hair loss, you convert that hair to a rest phase called telogen hair. And what TGF-beta-1 does is knock out these hairs altogether, and they become catagen hairs. Here there's a talk from a dermatologist treating hair loss. And I'm here to tell you, I bet they don't talk about TGF-beta-1 converting, as it does, transforming cells from antigen hairs to catagen hairs. But when you see people with this massive hair loss, that is TGF-beta-1 in action. Same thing along, by the way, with your people with nasal polyps and vocal cord polyps. That's TGF-beta-1. It is not the case with colon polyps, uh, although I don't have a big enough data set. Um, this lady now, bless her heart, um, now doesn't even say good morning. Uh, because now she's got restrictive lung disease. TGF-beta-1 uh, is known to cause interstitial fibrosis. And when you look at usual interstitial pneumonitis, that is TGF-beta-1 straight and narrow. Here is one of my good friends. Um, he farms a lot. Uh, got chicken farms. And if you want fresh veggies, you know, I can guarantee you the organic stuff from his chicken is making those good. Now, we talked about chicken manure having dinoflagellate toxins in it yesterday uh, with monensin and nigerisin and copper uh, thrown in for the mix, so that may change things. But he came in, his wife is, is nose, ECM, she's had Lyme multiple times. And so he comes in and his knees and, and hands are, 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 are acutely inflamed. And he thinks he's got Lyme. Well, um, his tap of his knee, his hot knee, didn't show me much of anything. High C4A is real typical about acute joints. Uh, when you can get knee fluid, measure C4A in it. Uh, even if your culture is, is negative for Borrelia, do your tap and measure C4A on joint fluid. Spinal fluid is not quite that good, by the way. C4A is not quite a good marker in, in spinal fluid. And I don't have enough patients with TGF-beta-1 on spinal fluid. Uh, Cambridge 
is a little reluctant to run TGF beta 1 on spinal fluid, so we got to be kind of kind of careful. This guy has ANCA, ANCA positivity. That's an antineutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody, and it's called an atypical. And you think of ulcerative colitis and some unusual cirrhosis we talked about yesterday. And no surprise, this autoimmune problem is showing up with high TGF beta 1. Uh, his C4A is up, C3A is negative, and his MMP9 is uh, quite high. So um, I don't have these tests available. I give him antibiotics. And it's a risk benefit in my mind. He's got a tick point, he's sick, he's got hot joints, I'm going to treat him. And if someone argues with me, I'm going to go back to what our duty is in Lyme disease, and that is a first and foremost a clinical diagnosis. We use blood tests for epidemiologic studies, and the CDC is very clear on that point. I don't think that everyone would have treated this patient. I know in my practice, if I don't treat this patient, then I have failed my duty in a Lyme endemic area. But I give him antibiotics, and I, I'm not helping this guy at all. He's getting worse. And remember what we saw before uh, in the, the post Lyme study, antibiotics lower some of these things. So I gave him actose and cholestyramine. He's some better, especially with MMP9, but he's still very high C4A. So what I do with him after informed consent is I give him erythropoietin and I knock down his C4A beautifully, thinking that's all I need to do. I then give him low sartan to an effort to knock out TGF beta 1. It does correct, his joint symptoms clear, and then ANCA converts to negative. I did not give him VIP because he tolerated low sartan very nicely. But when you look at autoimmune findings, think of treatment with low sartan if you can get their blood pressure to respond. 